How's it going guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how to make speed gauge like Prozac. This is what our remake of Russ sounds like. standard speed gauge track but they sound a little bit different in the bass which we're going to go through right now. So the bass on its own sounds like this. So it's actually a preset for my UK Garage Volume 3 pack. You can get that from the link in the description. Let's firstly have a look at the MIDI. So yeah, it took me ages to work out the MIDI. Um, we're not even in a certain key which is quite bizarre. Um, or if we are, it's a bit of a random one, so it'd be like a mixologian or um, a Lydian. It must be one of these. But yeah, we start on F sharp. That's sort of the root note. And then if we have a look here, these three notes, if it was a major or minor, they wouldn't be uh, together. So I think the reason he can get away with this is that there's really minimal vocal in the track. Uh, I mean, the only vocal is really this shout. <laughs> Yeah, the scale is really weird, but yeah, let's move on to the bass sound itself. So yeah, we've gone for um, the Reese Classic one, and what's different about it is the filter, as you can see, it's got a huge notch in it. So if I just turn this off for a second. So this basically makes every MIDI note changes with the key. So so if the note's up, then it will go up. If it's down, it will go down. Uh, and as we've ticked that on, we can then choose a frequency. So if we boost up this resonance. And if we choose a frequency of 161, or around that mark, go 171 if you wanted, or a bit lower, or a bit higher. Sort of that sweet spot where you're not getting too much high end, but you're getting like enough. Um, yeah, and boost that resonance. Yeah, so by boosting that resonance, it really isolates those frequencies, especially when it's moving up and down on its own. It doesn't have the same effect, but if you select the key mode, that it really isolates the frequencies that are right with that note. Yeah, and if we have a look at the rest, we've just got this basic shape. So go to basic shapes. You then want to detune it by minus 33 and then positive 33. Um, there's also a slight bit of a click, so you could just boost up the attack. I mean, in the grand scheme of things with the drums, you don't hear it. Hence, I've only noticed just now. Um, we've also got this noise, which is just ever so slight. Get rid of that if you wanted, but it helps to fill out the higher frequencies. Um, we've then got this hyper. So it makes it a bit wider. And this chorus. That's the same sort of thing, just makes it a bit wider. In terms of effects, we've got this kick start, so it's side chain into the kick. An important note with the kick start or any side chain um, is that I've clicked audio mode and put it to the kick, but then it shows you how long the kick is. So if it was like this, it would be too long. Or like this, it would be too short. So you're here, look, it's coming exactly sort of where the kick's ending. So around there sounds good to me. If you have a look at the effects, we've got this drum bus. Without it, with it. We've got it on compression mode, which really helps to glue the bass and the kick and like squash it nicely together. Next, we've got the drum group. It sounds like this. And with the kick. All these have been beefed up nicely with another drum bus. And I recommend putting sort of drum bus or at least like a quite heavy compression on all of your drums. Um, we've also got this on the return channel is this reverb. Uh, if I boost it, you'll get to hear it more. So when you're on the reverb um, on the return track, 
on the return track, you're gonna make sure the dry wet's at 100%, and this way none of the dry signal's getting double mixed onto itself. Uh, and then you can just bring that in gradually till it sounds right. And uh, you could also just automate it as well if you wanted. So you can have it to come up a little bit more here, um, a little bit less here, it's up to you really. But yeah, let's go through the drum. So there's no processing on really any of the drums. I'm just gonna mute them all and then bring them all in individually. Right, so first you've got this hat. All these drums are from my Speed Gauge pack. You can get that from the link in the description. I then layered that with another hat. This just helps to really sort of um, thicken it up a bit. And that's actually a closed hat. And I've got this offbeat hat, which adds a bit of rhythm. Then this clap, which has loads of sort of reverb already installed in it. Then we've got another clap, a shaker. So how I've made the shaker is I've just got a normal shaker from the pack um, and I've got this LFO and I've mapped it onto the decay here. So to do that, we do is get an LFO, drag it in, click map, and then you can click on the delay or the sustain. And then that's gonna go up and down independent with this. So if I was to change the rate on the original one, so yeah, it sounds different, obviously. Um, so yeah, once you've got that, I then added an EQ to take out some of the low end, and it was still lacking a little bit more high end. I found so I added this ride fills out a nice lot of frequencies. I always find a ride a bit of a cheat sheet to add in um, a nice bit of high end to a, a drum bus or a drum group. And now I've got this little gauge rim, which is panned. And then everything's got this swing on it. So this has the Logic 16 swing 68. And yeah, just before the drop, I've got these uh, crashes and this white noise here. Great guys, thank you very much for watching. Nothing too crazy today, um, but yeah, I thought better to post something than post nothing. So, nice one. Cheers guys, see you next time.